Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Now, after what um, transpired this morning, I prepared a press statement here. Now, I've been made to understand that Mr. Bala Subramaniam Anapalaki Perumal has issued a statutory declaration at a press conference held at the Prince Hotel at 11 a.m. this morning, in which he retracted his earlier statutory declaration affirmed on the 1st of July 2008. The reason given for this retraction is that his original statutory declaration recorded by myself was compelled to be affirmed under duress. No details of this alleged compulsion and duress have been put forth. Mr. Bala is reported as not answering when asked this morning in his press conference who was it who intimidated him. For the record, I confirm that the statutory declaration affirmed by Mr. Bala on the 1st of July 2008, which he released yesterday, was affirmed voluntarily before a commissioner for oaths, Dr. T. Yokes Warren, and in my presence. I first met Mr. Bala in the presence of a few other persons in a restaurant about two months ago where he asked me to assist with preparing a formal document incorporating some evidence that had not been presented in the ongoing Alton Junior trial. I started the process about two weeks after that. I would have met him a few times where I recorded in longhand what Mr. Bala told me. I have had no reason to doubt what Mr. Bala told me as being anything other than the truth, and my role was confined to listening to what he had to say, recording the same, and transcribing it into a statutory declaration in a systematic and comprehensible format. This statutory declaration was then attested before the above said Commissioner for Oaths, Dr. T. Yokus Warren, in my presence, and of course in the presence of Mr. Bala. The contents of this statutory declaration were read in front of this Commissioner of Oaths, who inquired from Mr. Bala whether he understood the contents and whether that was his declaration. After Mr. Bala confirmed the same, he was asked to sign three copies and the Commissioner attested each copy. Mr. Bala was asked to produce his identity card to the Commissioner and then sign the Commissioner's recording book. I am therefore extremely surprised that Mr. Bala, in the space of 24 hours, has engaged the services of another lawyer and affirmed another statutory declaration, swearing the first one was untrue and that he was forced to sign it. As I am familiar with the character of Mr. Bala, having spent hours with him recording his statement, I am very skeptical that he has signed the second statutory declaration of his own free will, and I am convinced he has been intimidated to do so by either threats or promises, as I can think of no other reason. The Commissioner of Oaths, who attested the first statutory declaration, is prepared to confirm what I have stated above as far as the voluntariness of Mr. Bala's statutory declaration is concerned. In fact, Mr. Bala recognized this Commissioner as soon as he saw him, as both apparently grew up in the same neighborhood in Slim River, which is something I had no knowledge of. And that is my press statement. Thank you. Uh, this is my statement. <coughs> Yesterday in this very room, in the presence of many of you here today, Mr. Bala Subramaniam released a statutory declaration which gave evidence of criminal suppression of evidence and perjury in the Alton Tuya murder case. In front of dozens of persons, Mr. Bala stood by his sworn statement here yesterday. But some of you might recollect, in answer to a question, he did acknowledge his fear for his personal security due to the power and position of those he had implicated. I am very troubled that last night, one way or another, and true to Mr. Bala's concerns, another crime was committed. That crime was something which caused Mr. Bala this morning to retract the statement 
that he made on Tuesday 1st July 2008 and which he revealed publicly yesterday. In particular, we have taken note. If you put the two SDs side by side and if you study them paragraph by paragraph, you will notice that the specific statements that were revised in Bala's new statement have selectively removed those which, spe which specifically implicate the Deputy Prime Minister by name. It's an, immediate, it's an obvious inference anyone will make by studying these two statements side by side. This sorry episode confirms again what Dr. Sri Anwar Ibrahim said yesterday, that there is a consistent pattern of manipulation of the criminal justice system in this country. Last night, we witnessed yet another instance of manipulation of evidence relevant to the most significant murder trial in recent times. We are fully satisfied that the first statutory declaration by Mr. Bala was voluntary and made with the intention that the truth should no longer be hidden from the public, that it was important for us all to know the secrets that he had carried with him since October, November 2006. Our confidence in the original declaration, declaration is based on the information given to us by his counsel, Mr. Emmerich Singh Sidhu, and our own observations of Mr. Bala himself. For the record, his first statutory declaration was shown to us, was first shown to us on Wednesday, 2nd July, one day after it was attested to uh, on the first, on the Tuesday, the 1st of July. Now, the key question arises. Which of these two statutory declarations represents the truth? And this is now the question that the Royal Commission we called for yesterday must immediately deal with. You recollect that we ended our press conference yesterday with a call for a Royal Commission to deal with the serious allegations that Mr. Banda had revealed. And now we must add this even more fundamental question for that Royal Commission to deal with. Which of these declarations represents the truth? The fact that the retraction was done so speedily and in circumstances where Mr. Bala says it was made or alleges it was made under duress but will not name those who pressured him speak for themselves. Now let's ask a question. Who would have a motive to send Mr. Bala to make such damaging allegations against the police, the AG's chambers and Dato Sri Najib with the idea that he would then withdraw it the next day to attempt to embarrass us? It's difficult to think of anyone. In fact, I can't think of anyone who would want to do that. But who, however, would have a motive to intimidate Mr. Bala last night to retract his statement immediately? And obviously, from the contents of the first statutory declaration, a comparison of both, a number of people would have that interest. We demand that a Royal Commission be established to investigate the key questions stated above. Which of these two statutory declarations represents the truth? This issue must also be ventilated in the Al Tantuya trial by all parties so that the truth is established. In fact, we would now say the prosecution is duty bound to re investigate, to open up again all of Mr. Bala's investigations. Thank you. I'm only here as counsel for Mr. Amrik Singh Sidhu in the sense that I need to basically make sure that his rights and interests are protected and that uh, he, in this matter, acted as counsel and as a lawyer and therefore was discharging his duty. Um, I don't really have anything else to say beyond that fact. But I've been handed both the statutory declarations today to have a look at and I've already made that observation Thank earlier you in Mr. Varasa, that when you put them side by side, what you see in the two documents is basically an attempt to sift out only certain pieces of evidence. And that is a strange feature about this uh, statutory declaration that has basically been sworn today. So as I said to you, I'm here basically to protect Mr. Amri Sikhsidhu. I want word to go out that he will resist any attempt basically to make any allegations that he has been involved in this manner in any unfair method or system. And he will stand by that. And I will fight for him all the way through as far as that is concerned. Thank you. Thank you.